Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the International Railway Summit. My name is Jules Omura, and I'm the Managing Director of IRIT's events, the organizers of the International Railway Summit. On behalf of the entire IRIT's team and our special partner, UIC, the International Union of Railways, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 10th and the first online edition of the International Railway Summit. Uh, the summit last met uh, this time last year in Warsaw, and it feels like an entire generation ago that it happened. The world has since experienced an unimaginable human tragedy and economic hardship, and along with that came a new normal. This new normal has hit the railway sector badly, but it also gives us the chance to pause and reset. When we can no longer, no longer rely on the past data and the regular revenue, we could either keep doing what we have always done and keep our fingers crossed, or we can be creative, we can challenge our preconceptions and do something new. The latter is what many of our colleagues have opted for, and, and it gives, um, it gives uh, um, uh, um, us a hint of a new optimistic future of the rail sector. For example, the, the rail sector has traditional thought of, traditionally thought of their business as carrying passengers and goods from station A to station B. This is a product-oriented ori thinking, whereas the new type of rail businesses is customer-oriented and regard themselves as mobility providers, so they're interested in the customer's entire journey from door to door. In the medium term, the fact that rail is the most environmentally friendly mass transport mode has given a big boost to the sector, but we must not be complacent. Now that the initial phase of panic and stop gaps is over, we can make something out of what is otherwise a horrible period of our life to reimagine rail transport. And that is the common thread of the next three days of our program, entitled Reimagining Rail, Innovation to Get Society Back on Sustainable Track. We have three key themes, recovery from COVID, sustainable mobi mobility, and digital inno innovation. And we have a great lineup of all star uh, speakers. One common feature of the speakers we have invited is that they all challenge the status quo in one way or another. I would like to thank all the speakers for agreeing to share their, their insights with us and guide us through this foggy stretch of our route. I encourage you to join you in the debate throughout the next three days. I'd like to thank UIC for their continued support and uh, we, um, we're grateful for, to the, um, all the sponsors for their contributions. Uh, before I hand over to um, our conference chair, I have a few housekeeping notices. Um, everything in this summit takes place on this website. If you're taking part in the official one-to-one -one meeting program, uh, please ensure you go to my, uh, the My Schedule page to check your meeting program. The first set of meetings are scheduled for immediately after this opening panel at 9.30. The meeting program will continue until Friday, whereas the conference program will end on Thursday. Along with this, uh, 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 the great debate sessions, the meeting program uh, is what makes this uh, summit unique. Rail operators and infrastructure managers are matched with technical experts based on their project requirements, and we facilitate uh, cross-border exchange of ideas. If you're taking part in the meeting program, uh, please keep an eye on any changes to your schedule and make sure you have registered for the sessions you want to attend so that the system will block your time and, and we don't organize meetings during those uh, sessions. The virtual meetings will happen in the My Schedule section of the site. Uh, please start and end your meetings on time. And I don't need to remind those of you in the railway sector of the importance of uh, sticking to the timetable and a small delay here and there will cause uh, a large knock-on effect later down the line. We have a VIP lounge hosted by our platinum sponsor, Instrumental, a Unipart rail company. Uh, there are some activities during the specific time, so do look out for the information at the lounge. We also have some closed roundtable sessions where up to eight delegates can join the table uh, to discuss a specific topic. Remember to visit the innovation showrooms where you can watch videos, download brochures, send chat messages to the exhibitors and requ request meetings. Finally, if you have any questions, our team is here to help you, just like our, our usual summit. There's a help request form at the top right of your screen, and we are constantly monitoring all the requests, and we'll get back to you. 
And now without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce our conference chair, Simon Fletcher, Director for Europe at the International Union of Railways, UIC. UIC is a technical body representing the global railway sector, and most, most recently they have been credited for coordinating the sector's approach during the pandemic. Simon has worked for UIC since 2003, and its board member since as, as its board member since 2009. Simon is a truly European Englishman, known as UIC's man in Brussels, although physical locations no longer matter these days. I say a truly European Englishman. I mean he speaks French. Clearly, that's, that ticks the boxes these days for UIC to put him in charge of Europe. Uh, Simon will be supported by two further UIC colleagues as co-chairs of this summit. Mark Kigon, Director of uh, Passengers and COVID Task Force Coordinator, and Lucy Anderton, Head of Sustainable Development. Simon, over to you. Jules, thank you very much indeed. And, um, and as, they, as they say, follow that. Um, but it, but indeed, uh, thank you very much indeed for the introduction. Uh, and of course, this is this being the tenth edition of uh, the International Rail Summit. It's something of a watershed as well. Uh, that we can put ten candles on the birthday cake, uh, albeit a, a virtual birthday cake, of course. Uh, and and additionally, this is the first one uh, that the IRITS team have had to do entirely virtually, or in 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 terms of uh, doing it as a web based conference. And so. Uh, it's a learning curve, uh, and we will be, of course, suffering, I have no doubt, over the next three days, the vagaries of the of the internet. Jules has set the scene very nicely, um, but in order to uh, to set that scene um, just a little bit more um, and to give us a bit of a taster, a teaser, if you like, for the very busy schedule uh, that we've got over the next uh, three days, um, I'm, I'm delighted to introduce uh, to you all um, the, um, the Director of Land Transportation at the European Commission, Elizabeth Werner. Uh, no stranger, of course, to this, uh, to this particular event, um, as uh, Elizabeth was, uh, was with the group, uh, uh, was with the meeting last year as well in Prague, uh, in, in Warsaw. Uh, um, Elizabeth, um, well, one of the things that, um, that, that fulfills your particular uh, daily agenda is, of course, is the uh, is the whole concept of the uh, of of now implementing some elements of the Green Deal, um, and and one of the things that that, that sort of um, jumps out of the um, from amongst the six key actions that are in the Green Deal um, is the one that sets out the challenge of rolling out cleaner, cheaper, and healthier forms of private and public transport. What challenges do you see the railways in supporting this objective? And when, by the way, welcome. Good morning. Um, good morning from Brussels to everyone. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, for us, uh, the ambitions of the Green Deal mean a 90% reduction in transport emissions by 2050, and that's a very tall order. Um, the European Commission has set out our roadmap to achieve this in December last year in the form of a strategy for sustainable and smart mobility. And really, it's no coincidence that rail is one of its main pillars. Rail doesn't have a decarbonization problem. Rail in Europe often has an attractivity problem. That's why we have set um, very ambitious targets. We would like the high-speed rail traffic to double across Europe by 2030. And we want also the rail freight traffic to increase by at least 50% by 2030. And um, as was already mentioned, there really is a moment, a tidal moment of change now. Um, we think that there will be an opportunity to think differently and to operate differently. Clearly, 2020 was far from easy for the rail sector and, and transport of focus in general. But we also learned some important lessons, and that's about the resilience of rail, especially of freight trains. There is a context, clearly lasting context of growing interests by citizens, by companies, by governments alike in sustainability. And this combination, together with an unprecedented investment opportunity from the recovery funding will allow us hopefully to overcome the challenges that remain 
for railways to increase their traffic and to increase their modal share. These challenges, and I think that's that's not a surprise, and that's probably similar in other parts of the world as well. They relate in particular to obstacles to providing the services across borders. And that's because of regulatory differences, because of technical obstacles, operational difference. Sometimes there are insufficient incentives to think competitively. Often there is a sustained lack of investments. And what we really also want to achieve is an integration of railways into the wider mobility system. And obviously, digitalization will help us achieve this. For us, rail has all the characteristics to become an important beneficiary with the unprecedented spending that we have in Europe um, for the recovery and we really see investing in railways as investing in a more digital, in a more sustainable and in a more resilient future. So even though times were hard, we're quite optimistically looking to the next years here. And certainly, thank you for that, Elizabeth. And certainly recovery, I think, is part of the, the general theme, as Jules was saying in his introduction uh, of, of this event over the next three days. We are in 2021. Um, yes, we are seeing the green shoots of recovery, and I think that is something which is very important. Uh, we also have this fantastic opportunity that you and your colleagues have um, have launched this year of the European Year of Rail. Um, I mean, wh why did you feel that it was so important that the railways have be highlighted in this way? Uh, and what expectations, how, how would you measure the success, as it were, of the European Year of Rail? Well, um, thank you very much. It's with great pleasure that I take the opportunity to give you a bit of an insight in the busy plans for the European Year of Rail. Well, there were a number of reasons why we think it should be 2021 and why we also think it remains relevant to do it in 2021. And that's particularly related um, to the fact that in the EU, 21 is the first year of full implementation of our new European legislative framework. Um, since 30 years or so, there was gradual legislation aiming at coming to a single railway areas where European railway undertakings can benefit from the same conditions operating everywhere in the EU. And that's in terms of safety, in terms of operations, but also in terms of really effective competition. So also market opening. And our aim with the European Year of Rail is to really highlight the many advantages of railways and to make it more attractive. So our ultimate measurement is to advance our policy to really have more traffic on rail. Because despite all the proven benefits of rail in terms of safety, in terms of um, sustainability, our clear impression is that it is not yet reaching its full potential. So we want to highlight the opportunities for uh, railways in tourism. We want to talk about innovation in rail. We want to talk about how rail really links regions and countries together in the European Union, but also beyond in the neighborhood. We have a very rich cultural heritage in railways that railways started in Europe after all, but we also see really a bright future. Young people like to travel by rail and we would also like to show how attractive it is to work in the railway sector. Um, essentially, our aim for this European year is to talk about railways, the advantages, but also the obstacle a bit beyond our usual interlocutors. To all of you who are in the audience today, but going beyond to people who we normally do not reach and particularly young people. So um, we have a couple of very interesting events working also with the presidency um, and a specific event uh, in Portugal coming up in the end of March. But we want to discuss questions of connectivity, 
um, how well rail links and can compete with other transport modes. We want to look at uh, questions of eco-labeling for goods transported by rail. Um, but basically, it's an extremely open framework and an umbrella for a lot of activities. So certainly what I said is not exhaustive and I would be delighted um, to receive at the end of this conference more ideas on what could be done in that particular year, because our motto here is really safe, really sustainable, hop on. Hop on. Thank hop you very on. much indeed. And I know, um, um, unfortunately, Elizabeth, you have to hop off now because you've got a, uh, some other things, but we're going to see you again later on. And I'd like to thank you very much just for bringing us that message, particularly based around what I have uh, what I believe to be resilience, rethinking, revitalizing and recovery of the railways. That's five hours. That's a bit worrying that we've got to that sort of level of thinking already first thing in the morning. But that's that's a fabulous approach. And thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, I, I would like to bring in now um, the, our second uh, invited guest uh, this morning, Gianluigi Castelli, um, who is um, the, uh, the president of the FS Group, that's the railway group in, in Italy, uh, but also um, uh, my boss or boss's boss uh, in the UIC, as he is the president, the current president of the UIC. Um, and we are absolutely delighted, Gianluigi, to have you here. Um, Gianluigi has got a very strong background in, um, in digitalization and, um, uh, and, and also very much involved in, uh, technical, in technological innovation uh, and, and as such um, has uh, been involved in that uh, um, throughout, uh, throughout, I have to say, his career. Um, Gianluigi, well, one of the most important things, you're very welcome, of course, to join us here and I know this is not the only opportunity that you're going to uh, take to 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 speak to us, but we are we are in unprecedented mo circumstances here at the moment with the current COVID pandemic. It has, as Elizabeth has just said in her intervention, had a huge impact on the railways, and 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 in many many cases, passenger traffic in particular has been severely affected. Um, recovery from this is um, and and most importantly, regaining passenger confidence uh, in travelling by train uh, will be a real challenge. What do the railways need to do to meet those challenges in your view? This is a very good question, Simon. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, first of all, in my capacity of chairman of the UIC, I want to send a warm greetings to all the people attending uh, uh, digitally to, to the summit. Let me start reminding uh, the size of the revenue losses uh, suffered by the rail sector in 2020. Uh, with respect to the previous year. At the global level, uh, we suffered for a loss in the range of 66 to $85 billion. That is a loss of 19 to 25 percent year over year. Uh, passenger transport at a global scale, as you mentioned, lost more than 30 percent of revenues and 40 percent uh, in, in Europe. We all know very well the implications of these impacts in a sector where costs are generally fixed. Transport operation had to cut as much as possible those few costs that they could cut, also deferring investments and therefore causing troubles to suppliers, reducing innovation and postponing many new promising projects. This happened around 2020 and we expect a long tail along during, during 2020, 2021, despite the unique measures that we put in place. However, uh, I'm quite sure that our flair for technological excellence will let us respond to the crisis in the most flexible and resilient manner. Uh, a new platform, for example, by the UIC, born in the Railway Committee, uh, is the UIC COVID-19 uh, Task Force, where a lot of uh, contributors have helped identify the ways to get out of this, uh, of this crisis and redesign a safe new normal and rebuild the trust among citizens, customers and societies at large. So we are proposing uh, economic measures and carry on the continuous impact assessment and scenario analysis together with the governments, uh, the local governments and, and the, European, the European Commission, but also the other members all over the world are running similar, similar plans. And of course, there is a very important aspect that we should not uh, uh, forget, and it is that of communication. 
communicated that uh, uh, the rail transport system is safe uh, and uh, that the people can travel on our train in a safe in a safe way and uh, this is the way we should uh, work to rebuild the trust uh, to reestablish trust in the train transportation and grow in 2021 hopefully coming to the new normal by 2022 uh, the new normal or maybe the new different Gianluigi, but certainly it's not going to be the same as it was before all of this happened and thank you very much for that for that brief uh, insight and i know you're going to develop that theme a little later on uh, in that specific session about recovery from the particular current pandemic um I i'd like to i'd like to move us um, if i may um, to a topic that is very i know close to your heart and that's digitization of the railway system it is high on the agenda at the moment um, and much of it is much is made of automatic train operation, in fact, but um, um, there are uh, other aspects of automation that, that, uh, that I think we can highlight and, and such as predictive maintenance, for example, of assets like track and rolling stock or uh, and so on. In your experience and the way and some of the, the issues that have been developed, uh, can you share with us some of your expectations from this digital approach? And how do you believe it will help the railways to be more competitive compared to other modes of transport? Definitely. Uh, I really believe that uh, digital is becoming the foundations of uh, the new transportation systems, uh, including uh, railways. And uh, the railway cooperating community is committed in many areas. And uh, uh, I think that uh, we will have a full insight in the presentations and the discussions that will go on during the summit uh, in the next days. Uh, as an example, as you mentioned, it, uh, the, the predictive maintenance is one of the cornerstones of our future safety management. Uh, but uh, we are, I think, as a community, embracing, when, when I say community, I mean the operators, the supplier, all, all the stakeholders in the, in the railway transportation. And we think that we are embracing a whole general uh, approach. Um, the USC is contributing to this in first place, uh, con working on the important aspect of interface. Interfaces is, is uh, what enables the creation of a fully integrated systems where all the components really work, work together. And another key element is the digital architecture. Uh, which is our focus uh, in, in a, in a multi-regional perspective. And therefore, the USC, I think, is a front runner in this domain, and uh, we can count on various uh, strategic projects uh, that uh, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to mention. The first one is automatic, uh, digital automatic coupling, the DAC project, in partnership with many European stakeholders, which means uh, having smart freight across Europe, which uh, today is not, is not the case. The second crucial element is the future railway mobile communication system, so-called FRMCS, which is a project that will enable the current ERNTMS to, to be fully deployed and, and, and allowing for the connection of the entire European rail, rail infrastructure with onboard, onboard, onboard systems. And, and this is one of the pillars uh, for the automated train operation. Uh, the first is the revision of the technical specification for interoperability, con control and command signaling. And the second one is the use of uh, 5G technology, technology uh, very soon. Uh, also, in terms of sales and distribution, we have the new open sales and distribution models, which is a platform that, again, will, us, will let us deploy new ticketing and reservations uh, on, on the European scale. All these will make a difference and stay, allow us to stay competitive on the, on, the, on the long run. As you mentioned, Simon, in my speech later this afternoon at 1 p.m., I will try to provide some more insights. I can say my two cents, if I, if I can say that, on those <laughs> issues that might be crucial for the railway, for the railway industry uh, in this particular phase. Passenger transport, how to regain confidence, uh, how to manage a deep change in demand for business mobility, how to be ready to catch, uh, hopefully, the new way of leisure travel that uh, we hope will be back very soon. Here in Italy, of course, is a very attractive country from a touristic point of view and so this is one of the elements 
on top of our of our agenda. In freight transport, uh, we uh, are finally, hopefully, in a position to answer to the old questions for our, our industry in terms of interoperability, intermodality, and uh, how to make the railways the center of door-to-door -door and high-value-added services, because the pandemics have given a strong push to e-commerce, and e-commerce is based on the ability to deliver parcels, packages, products uh, in a very, very efficient way. And the railways has to play a key role in this. So I, I'd like to conclude this answer by overturning the title of this 10th International Summit, uh, Remaging Rail Innovation to Get Society Back on Sustainable Track, I would say putting the world back on a sustainable track largely depends on our capacity to achieve a deep digital transformation of our organization and of our industry as a whole. Thank you, Gianluigi, and I know that under your, under your stewardship, the, uh, the USC has, um, has moved forward um, considerably um, over the last three or four years in, in, in uh, identifying solutions that will be able to achieve, uh, to achieve that. Um, thank you very much indeed uh, for, uh, for your um, input to this uh, uh, short but sweet uh, opening session to the, uh, uh, to the IRITS 10 uh, and uh, the IRS 10. Um, and I'm going to, uh, at this point, um, draw a veil uh, over this uh, element here because it is, time, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to move on uh, in our programme. Uh, so thanking Elizabeth and, and Gianluigi for their input. As I said, you're going to see both of them a little later on uh, and in more detail um, as well. Um, now you have an opportunity. Thank you, um, thank you very much indeed, Gianluigi. Uh, now you have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to, to make a choice uh, um, about where you would like to go next. Um, we have two parallel or two sessions running in parallel now, um, starting at 930 uh, one of which is uh, PI1 related to accelerating infrastructure digitalization, and the other is PO1, which is about uh, designing a smoother and quieter passenger experience. Uh, you are um, uh, able to connect to one or other of those. Um, uh, if you want to, uh, to hear a little more about uh, uh, digital innovation then go to the one about infrastructure and if you want to go a little bit more about the passenger experience uh, then you go to the one about um, uh, go to PO1. So now uh, what I'd also like to remind you all of course is that you have to click on the relevant link to be able to get to the right place because you know whilst we may have had one one screen as it were for this opening session we're now going into two two screens and so you need to click on the right link to be able to get there. Um, and as ever, please um, feel free to use the chat facility um, if you want to make any comment uh, uh, and even to put questions forward. The team, the IRITS team are monitoring uh, the chat facility and will be able to, to highlight, uh, bring out questions uh, from that. So from this particular um, f uh, stage, as it were, um, I'll say goodbye uh, and uh, see you again in very, very, very shortly. Um, from my point of view, I will be doing the, uh, the infrastructure one uh, and uh, Jules is going to be uh, introducing uh, our colleague Carlo Borghini from Shift to Rail in the, uh, in the passenger experience uh, stage. So for the moment, goodbye.